Hello, everybody, and welcome to my new studio, The Batman Digs Again. Listen, I want to shoot a video for new agents as well as senior agents about how to start a transaction in Zip Form Plus. Zip Form Plus. So I'm going to share my screen with you and just go ahead and start doing it with you, okay? Um, here we go. Okay. So I'll move around my stuff so you don't have to deal with what I'm doing here. All right, so what I want to show you is, first of all, you want to log into Zipform Plus from any web browser that you're using. I find that Chrome typically works best for it. Um, so I just type in Zipform. You can see my URL is already coming up as zipformplus.com. I'm going to hit enter, and then it's going to prompt me for my username and my password. Your username is always going to be your full name, your first name, dot your last name, Bruce.Moyer's mine, and then whatever password you choose to have is yours. I don't know your password. You don't get to know mine either. Simply select sign in from this page. What it will then do is it's going to bring up to you to the new transactions. Now, my screen's a little bit different from y'all's, but it's okay. Um, all you're going to do is hit new right here, and then it's going to give you the options of what are you going to be working with, a listing, a purchaser or an offeror, a, a new lease, a new lease listing, or a quick e-sign. Just pick any of these that you want to do. If you want to get a document signed very quickly, a quick e-sign is an easiest way to do it. Um, but for our transaction purposes, it's going to be buy, uh, buying or selling. So I'm going to go ahead and select this as a buying. And as you can tell, it just starts opening up some windows for me. First window that comes is the summary page window. It's the transaction information. All you need to do here is name it. So let's go ahead and do, I'm going to do Batman two, because I already have a Batman one in here. <laughs> and that you notice that there's a red asterisk right there. That red asterisk means that it's a required field for you to, to proceed. So the rest of these are not red asterisks. If you have an offer that you're going to submit to somebody and you already know the MLS number, if you select the MLS connect, it should connect you right into all and pre-populate all this information for you like we absolutely love being done for us. If not, if you have a street address, anything of that sort that you want to fill in, go for it. But you come down to category, you must tell it what kind of category it wants it to be in. So I'm going to choose residential because that's most of our transactions. And then the status is either whatever you want, active or inactive, pending, fell through, or prospect. So depending upon what it is that you're wanting to do with this transaction itself, you can mark it as an active if, you've got, or if you're already looking for property for them, or put it as pending whenever it's already under contract, uh, put it as a prospect if it's brand new and it's cold and you don't know what you're going to be end up, ending up doing with them just yet. I'm going to leave mine as active. And it already fills in my agent name, Bruce Moyer at paulalbanrealtors.net. And then it says, select my templates. Now, this is key. This is key. I've done most of the work for you. There are five options for you to select from here. So North Carolina buying, North Carolina selling. North Carolina, this is um, Paul Auburn Realtors office forms. So these are just the office forms that we need in every transaction as well. But they're the office forms. And then you have South Carolina buying and selling. Most of us are going to be doing North Carolina buying. I'm going to select that as a template. You see that it appears here, and I'm simply going to select save. Then when I do that, it is wonderful. It automatically opens up into that transaction. So if you would just intuitively play the game of what Zip Forms wants you to do. Notice that this is, this is where your transaction name is. Batman number two is right here around my cursor. It comes with a transaction identification number, which is there. We don't use it very much, but it's there for you. And it says it's going to be retained until August 30th, 2029. So that's more than our three years. We're all good, right? Everybody's good so far. All of my information is down here on the side. If I want to look at all the e-signings that I sent out for this person, I can always come back to the summary page and I can view them right there. Uh, if there's any other information that... I'm entering, it will populate for me. So this is what I want you to do, is if you know the MLS number, go ahead and fill it in. If it's a new prospect, you're not going to know what property they're going to buy, so leave it empty. Only put in what's ready for you. But eventually, I'm going to come back to this when I do know the MLS number, and I'm going to add it in, because all of this information is going to help the transaction file be more accurate and more true to what we need it to be, according to commission rules and license laws. I promise you. So I'm going to come back to this. Um, and it says, uh, well, we, you can always put in the state if you wanted to, if you know they're going to buy in North Carolina. Here's a purchase summary. Whenever you, you're going to submit an offer date, this is all phenomenal things for, for you to do. And you can always come back and edit this and change it if there's counter offers and all this fun things. I understand that. Buying side commission. 
Most of you are not doing this yet, but I would simply put in here what it is that you're expecting to be paid. And yes, our full service fee is 3%. So if I have this in 3% here, then it will calculate for me whenever I come up to the offer price. All this will magically appear for me. If you want to put in, um, if you're they're referring, for referring it out, here's your agents referring to, here's their referral fee, and then it will actually calculate all these numbers for you. So please use this as much as you possibly can. Listing side's also here for us. So please, please, please use every single thing of this in this field that you can. Once you are finished with this, you can then start working in the transaction itself. The fastest thing for you to do to get to any of the forms is, remember, we already put a template into place. So all I need to do is come up here and go to documents. Remember, this gray bar is for the client. All of the gray is for our client. This is our main um, menu items, but this is just for this one transaction. So I can go into documents right here. When I do that, I have already created two forms for you. Now, these are not hard words for you to remember. The first one says folder. Well, what's a folder? Well, it's something you put a transaction file in, right? It's a folder. You know what a folder is. It has two sub, well, it actually has three subfolders to it. Executory, executed, and then archive. And you'll notice that underneath here, they have the exact same three. Well, I've not done anything in this transaction yet, so have I ar archived anything? Nope, nothing's in archive. Archive is empty. If I want to go back, I can then, well, have I, have I gotten any of the forms completed yet? Nope. Executed means that the client has already signed and you're done with it. So this would be the working with real estate agents disclosure form. This would be an offer once it's submitted. This would be a contract. Anything that is completely done, executed, means it's been fully exercised. Executed forms go right there. If you if you are if our client is buying a property and they sign the residential property owners, the RPODs form and the MOG form residential properties owners association disclosure statement, then that form, once our client signed it, would go into executed forms. But if I select executed forms, again, there's no forms in there. So you're saying, where are the forms? Well, you guess where they are, right? <laughs> it's in the right place. Executory means they're all the forms that we need in the transaction, but they just haven't been completed yet. So that's our job. Simply by selecting on executed executory forms, you will see the template that I have created that has the potential, all the necessary forms in a typical transaction for you. If you can't find one of the forms or if one of the forms are not appropriate for you to use, let's try and find one. Let's say that, uh, let me see when there's one, we won't do it. Um, uh, all right, let's say that I'm speaking this, this form here, overview of the standard contract form uh, in Spanish. Let's say that my clients happen to be all English speaking. So I don't need this form in the transaction. Before you do anything with the form, just come over. You know, you're not going to need it. Select here and you will be able to delete it because no one has signed the form. You have the ability and poof, it's gone. Now it's not in the transaction record. So you can clean this up as you need to with what's, what you need or what you don't need. If you want to add a form to it, all you're going to do is just come over here. Now you can organize. I need to move this little video for us. Right underneath me is all forms. If you select all forms, you will then have your library where you can select North Carolina Realtors and you can go through. And if you know the name of the form, do it alphabetically and find what form it is that you need. Now, I want to show you everything that is in blue is already in the transaction itself. So if you see one of them that's in the blue and it's the document that you need, we'll just go back. You just overlooked it. But let's say we needed to have a short sale addendum in this form. So this short sale addendum, actually, if I hover over it, it comes up and says short sale addendum July 15th. That's the last time they um, updated that form. So that would be appropriate. How I get it added into this transaction is click it once. You'll see this little round circle. And then it says it was successfully added. So if I come back then into my transaction file, I should be able to find short sales. And it's always going to be the very last form because it was the last form that we added to the transaction. It's that simple and easy. Now I'm going to delete this because I don't want it in, in this for Batman 2. And I'm going to go ahead and start showing you how to enter in any information that you have. One of the first things that we should be doing with everyone is the working with real estate agents disclosure form. So if I select that, it's going to populate for me the form. Simple and easy, isn't it? Wow. Now, I'm going to go ahead and, well, I'm going to do another video explaining this. But when you're done, 
you can simply come in and prepare this for signing. Preparing this for signing, again, I need to move my video. It just comes up here and says prepare signing. So let's go ahead and get this done, right? So we know I want to use it. It says creating a, a signing. Signing name, it's the form, which we don't change, don't need to change. But it says change your signing service preference in settings. Looking for DocuSign? No. All of us are signed up for AuthentiSign. So leave it at AuthentiSign for now. Leave it at AuthentiSign for now, unless you have a DocuSign account and you want to use that, but I'd rather you not. It says return folder optional. What is that? The return folder is where does this document need to go once it's signed? All right. So think with me. This is signed by our clients who are typically in front of us right now, the buyers. So we'll be able to finish this form and it could go ahead and go into the executed folder, right? So that's what you do here. You select simply underneath where, what folder goes into executed forms. I'm going to select executed forms and create. Now, once it gets created, that's telling it where to go once it's signed. But we haven't told it who the signers are, right? So all, all it's going to come up. It's populating me. It's telling me what I need to do. I need to add the signers. So underneath here, it says add participants. Well, let's add them. I'm going to add... Well, it's going to be a new client, isn't it? Yeah, I can add the client's name. So let's put in Batman 2. And let's just do B for his last name and email. Now, he's going to need to have an email address. And if he doesn't, I'm going to use mine. For the sake of me doing this, I'm just going to select mine, okay? Enter in the role. They're going to be buyer number one. Now, I can either save them to my contact list, which I would do if I were you, because then they're going to be implemented into our CRM, which we will be eventually having. So I'm going to save it to my contact list and it's going to add him to the transaction. So now Batman is part of this transaction. Now I can come further down. I, these are already checked. All I need to do is select save. I'm going to save this one. Now you'll see that Batman one is already there, but let's pretend that we have another person. Let's say there's a, there's another person. So let's add number two. Let's make this wonder woman. How about that? Batman and Wonder Woman are going to buy, or buy properties together, if I can spell it correctly. <laughs> All right. They're going to need another email. I'm going to use my same one. It's a personal one, but I would ask the client for theirs. I'm definitely putting them into my contact list and adding them to the transaction. And then I can come down and select save. Now, now the next set, set signing layout mappings. Yes. This mapping means I can tell it number one or number two first or number one or number two second whichever it is. So in this instance, I have buyer number one is Batman and buyer number two, oh, it said ignore. Well, let's not do that. That needs to be um, Wonder Woman, okay? <laughs> let's not ignore her. So I can rearrange them if I want to and I can assign the signature blocks for them. I'm gonna assign the signature blocks for them where to go. If I wanna map the signers again too, oh here, select this for mapping them. I should tell you that. You can move these, move them around. Assign blocks to play the do do. Set signers to designate sign rules when you apply that. Yeah, they're signers. Uh -huh. And then assign signature box to apply. Assign signature box. Go on, go. All right, so I'm going to come down here. I'm going to say, I want to switch this around. I want to have Batman as a second one. I want Wonder Woman to be first. Women come first, right, gentlemen? We're all glorious people, and we all should respect that women have the opportunity to always go first. And they should be first. They, just, ooh, they deserve it. All right, now, Something happened. I double clicked it too many times and that signature panel went away. Ah, oh, what do I do? Pretty simple, y'all. I'm underneath Wonder Woman, sign here, magically appears, comes right back down. When I select that box again, I can come over and select the required signature and I can fix what I just did. Isn't that awesome? Now, the date here is already an automatic date because I already said it. My name magically appears and my license number is right there. I need to fill it in, don't I? So I create a text box, I drop it down. And now I can add my license number. Uh, not while I'm in it. It's going to make me do it afterwards. Come on. I get it. Got to get it in there. That box is fine. So I don't want that link. Y'all know what I'm trying to do. There you go. Any longer. It should let me text. If I can get my cursor in there, it will. I promise you. <laughs> It'll let me fill it in. All right. So that text needs to go to my license number which I've been able to do typically. And I'm just going to delete it for now. It's, it's not letting me fill it in, but it, it does, it does, it does let me fill it in. Okay, I promise you. Just, I'm trying to do it too much in a hurry. That's all you do. 
once you get finished with requiring their electronic signatures, then simply come up here to the top and select next. What it will do then is it will set a reminder. Now I'm gonna remind these people every day for 30 days, they need to be signing this to me. I'm just gonna simply select send. In so doing, I have now sent myself emails that I need to sign this transaction. When I get those emails, I'll receive the email and then I can just simply go through the process of accepting the um, all that stuff that we never read at the beginning um, for electronic signatures. And then once I click done, it goes to the next person and then to the next person and then back to me. It'll come back to the transaction and you'll get an email that that, that uh, e-signing is complete. And if you wanna look at all of your e-signings that are out there waiting for them to be signed, they're underneath your e-sign tab, which is right here. So it's very, very easy for you to do this. That's how you enter it in. And now I wanna say one other thing. Since that now, oh, once that form gets done, it's gonna be an executed, right? But it's nothing, nothing is in ex executed yet. It's still in executory forms. So if I want to go ahead and have Bruce review this because maybe they have already signed it and it did go into executed forms, the very next thing you need to do is to sit, is to click this and say, submit for review because the client's already done it. You've already done it. So you're ready for me to give you some feedback on it. Please do this step-by-step. Step. Every time you get something in, submit it for review. It doesn't matter. Do not wait until the end of the transaction to hit, to click submit for review for everything. It takes me forever to, to review an entire file and I'm not giving you great supervision. If you tell me along the way, uh, you can just say here, it needs review. So you can either select needs review up top. I will then select initial review, initial review passed, or I'll say it's approved, or I'll say it's not approved. If I say it's not approved, I can come down and I can write a comment to you, tell you what's going on or, or question something for you. And then when I hit apply, it goes directly to you. And if you just do this and say, hey, initial, uh, let's just, uh, it needs review, you just click apply. Boom. I now get an email message saying that, that form has been, oh, uh, review the stage. So I'm not so big about the stages here. So if you want to put in do not apply stage, I'm totally fine with that. And then hit, hit apply and then I'll get the email. Now that's going to come to me and tell me that it's time for me to review your document. And that's how easy it is to submit documents to me for your approval. Yeah. Isn't it awesome? I appreciate it. I love, 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 love that you guys have watched this. I'm thrilled and tickled that I have kept your attention and that you've seen this for me and that you love the new Batman field. So I appreciate you guys watching it. Hope you're doing well. And I look forward to seeing you very, very soon. By the way, I'm going ahead and I'm registering everybody for September the 25th CE here in Charlotte at Town Bank in Ballantyne. You have the emails for the address. It's from 930 until two o'clock. I am paying for it, but all of you are going to reimburse me $20. Appreciate it. Talk to you later. Bye.